Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to take a look at one of the more helpful tools when it comes to Redux. And that is the Redux DevTools extension. I'm going to show you how to include it in your React Redux application and its basic usage. There are two separate steps you have to perform. The first step is to add the extension to your browser. I will be adding it to Chrome. So in a new tab, Google Redux DevTools and click on the Google Chrome extension link. Then click on Add to Chrome. So you should now see the extension icon but grayed out. The second step is to add the Redux DevTools extension package to our React Redux application. So in a new tab, Google Redux DevTools but this time click on the GitHub link. Now if you scroll down, you're going to come across the usage section. Over here, our focus is on 1.3. Use Redux DevTools extension package from NPM. Let's follow the instructions. First, we need to install the package. So I'm going to copy this command, go back to VS Code, and in the terminal, paste it. The next step, we can use it in our store.js file. Let us import compose with DevTools from Redux DevTools extension. And then we specify this compose with DevTools as the second parameter to create store and pass in the apply middleware function as its argument. So the second parameter is now compose with DevTools, which accepts this apply middleware as its argument. And that is pretty much it. Let's run npm start again and see how this works in the browser. If you take a look at the extension icon, it is colored. If I click on the icon, a panel appears with a lot of buttons and text. If you click outside the panel, it automatically closes. So instead, what I am going to do is right click, inspect, and then select the Redux tab. We now have the same panel, but this time, it will not close if I click elsewhere. All right, this panel is very useful for a Redux application, especially for debugging. I will just explain some of the basic features that are relevant to our simple example and will leave the rest for you to explore. The first one is the state button. If I click on that, you can visually see the global Redux state at any given time. You can see the number of cakes and the number of ice creams. Now when I dispatch an action, let's say by cake, on the left hand side of the panel, you can see that there is a new item that has been added, which is the by cake action. And if you take a look at the state, cake has decremented by one. If I click on buy ice cream, we have a new action on the left panel and in the state, number of ice creams has decremented by one. What is also nice is that if I now click on the individual actions, I get to see what the state of the application was after the action caused the state transition. So right now, number of cakes is nine and number of ice creams is 19. If I select by cake, you can see that the number of cakes is 9, but the number of ice creams is still 20. So the state of the application after this action caused the state transition. If I click on buy ice cream, you can see that the number of ice creams is 19. This will hold good for any subsequent actions as well. Now just this information alone will help you debug to a great extent. Next, we have the action button, which basically gives information about the action that was dispatched. Right now, our action just has the type property. 
we will see more properties in the future. Now I also want to talk about two more buttons at the bottom. The first one is the dispatcher. Here I can specify an action and dispatch that action without the need of a UI element like a button. For example, right now the number of cakes is 9. I will specify the type as by cake and click on dispatch. You can see that the number of cakes reduced by 1. So if you want to dispatch an action and there is no UI element for it, you can make use of this dispatch button. The final button I want to discuss about is the slider. It basically gives you an option to travel through all the actions and see the state changes which in turn affect the UI. If I click on the play button, just observe the UI. Let me replay that. We bought a cake, we bought an ice cream and we bought a cake again. You can also go back in time and pause your application to verify if the state is what it is supposed to be. So Redux DevTools is just a terrific tool to have at your disposal. I highly recommend it for every React Redux application that you are going to be building. All right, that is all I have for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.